those stories the flip side hi i'm fiona fapple stapple and i'm a ghost i'm also a ghost representative here in the afterlife the ghosts here want to set the story straight this is what i help them do i tell you a ghost story and then the ghost gets to tell their side of the story here goes This story is called Tooth, and it begins with Gary. Gary was your normal everyday guy. At 30 years old, he had a good job, friends, worked out regularly, and lived in a decent apartment. He was still single, so when he inherited a two-bedroom house from his grandfather, it seemed perfect. It was just the right size and in a good neighborhood not far from his work. Gary soon moved into his new house, but things were not quite right from the very beginning. Gary wanted to love his new house, but something just seemed a little off about it. When he was in the house, sometimes he'd feel a slight caress on his face, like someone had brushed his cheek with a piece of cool silk and he'd catch just a glimpse of something out of the corner of his eye, like the smooth edge of a bat's wing, but it would be gone when he looked for it. And he seemed to be losing things, only to find them again a couple of days later exactly where he thought he'd left them. He thought he was losing his mind at times. Then there was the kitchen window. Gary would swear, but sometimes when he walked into the kitchen, there was something that looked like a weird old tooth sitting on the window ledge. It was a molar tooth. It was stained brown with tobacco, and it looked like it had strange designs etched into it in a dark gold color. But when he got closer to it, close enough to reach out and touch it, it disappeared, just disappeared. It happened time and time again. Sometimes it would reappear and disappear five times in five minutes, like someone was playing with him. Gary searched the house and the yard outside, looking for holographic projector, laser projector, other device, thinking somebody was playing a trick on him and there had to be something there to account for this. But he found nothing. The bad times when it happened were the times he swore he could hear a voice. He'd hear a very faint voice saying, Tooth, tooth. And then the air around the window ledge would seem to shimmer and boil. He'd feel a cool breeze blow by when this happened. Gary was not a superstitious guy. So he put it down to a trick of the light and drafts blowing through the house. It did bother him in the back of his mind, though, and it got to the point where he avoided the kitchen whenever he could. One Friday night, when Gary was out with his friends and had had a couple of beers, he told them about it. Dude, his friend Jack said, what are you smoking? Todd chimed in. The disappearing tooth. Get it on camera. You'd go viral on social. (laughs) They laughed and told him he was crazy. Well, he thought to himself, I might be crazy. But as they were all leaving for the night, his friend Holly pulled him aside. Hey, Gary, I have a friend who helps people with this stuff. Look, I don't need a shrink. I'm not crazy, Gary said as he glared at her. Holly looked shocked. It's not like that. She's a medium. She talks to the spirits. Just meet her. Her name's Serafina, and she's really nice, not judgmental at all. If there's something there, she'll let you know. But if it's nothing, she won't think less of you. I insist. I'll have Serafina call you tomorrow. Gary exclaimed, A medium? Really? You think the house is haunted? Well, it can't hurt to find out, Holly replied. Can I give her your number? Gary rubbed his chin, looked at Holly and her serious expression, and relented. Okay. The next day, Serafina called Gary to ask if she could stop by. Gary was about to say no, 
But then he wandered into the kitchen and glanced at the window ledge. There it was, the tooth. He reluctantly agreed. When Serafina came to the house, Gary liked her immediately. He explained the situation and showed her the window ledge. The tooth wasn't there. They sat at the kitchen table and Serafina pulled a gazing ball out of her handbag. It was a dark ball with glints of light in it. She set it on a stand on the kitchen table and sat down. She focused on the ball. Serafina soon went into a trance and asked the spirits to tell her what was happening. She described what was going on to Gary. I see an old man. His image is very faint. He's wearing old-fashioned clothing, and he's rather tall. He's telling me that his name is Elmer. The tooth is definitely his, and he wants my help to get it back. She paused for a moment. Then, ooh, she sat back from the gazing ball. Okay, Gary, I'm going to try to help Elmer now. I'm not exactly sure what I'm dealing with, so please don't try to help me unless I ask you to, okay? Gary said okay, wondering to himself just how crazy Serafina was. Serafina moved to the window, stood on her tiptoes, tilted her head up, and whispered into the air. It looked like she was whispering to a tall person, albeit an invisible one. Then she quickly put her hands on the window ledge and curled her fingers like she was grabbing something invisible. She started grappling with whatever it was, appearing to do a macabre little dance, her arms flailing about in jerky movements while she struggled to keep her balance. She nearly fell to the floor. The tooth appeared for an instant, flew up into the air, and then was gone again almost immediately. Serafina yelled to Gary, Open the window! Gary jumped up and opened the window. Serafina stuck her hands out the window, opened them wide while uttering in a strange language, then quickly pulled them in and slammed the window shut. She moved to the table and sat down, a bit shaken. What just happened? Gary asked. She explained to Gary that the house had been haunted by a ghost looking for his tooth, and an entity kept hiding it from him. But the ghost had his tooth now, and she had banished the entity. I thought I saw the tooth fly up into the air, then it disappeared, Gary said. Yes, that was the ghost reclaiming his tooth. I held down the entity so he could get it. Then I threw the entity out the window. So that's that. I think we killed two birds with one stone, so to speak, and I think your problems with the house are solved, Serafina said with a weary smile. Gary didn't know what to think of all that. So he didn't ask any questions. He just thanked her, paid her well for her time, and walked her to the door. As Gary was closing the door behind Serafina, he thought he detected a slight movement out of the corner of his eye. He twirled around, and as he did, he felt a breeze waft by, followed by the barest touch on his face of cool silk. What, the tooth? Okay, this is Fiona with the ghost of Elmer Stout. Elmer, would you like to explain why you haunted that house for so long? Hey, I wasn't trying to scare that kid. I just needed my tooth. When I was living, I had that tooth fixed special by a witch down in the bayou. She carved runes into it and filled the grooves with bewitched gold. And all the while, she spoke spells deep into the tooth. No one would mess with me after that. As soon as I cracked open my mouth and showed that tooth, even the biggest baddie would turn tail and run. Of course, everyone wanted that tooth when I died. The grave robber struck the day I was buried and stole it. It took me years and years to track down that tooth. I'd be hot on the trail and then I'd lose it again. I finally found it in that house. But every evil little thing in the afterlife wanted it. There was one in particular. I called it the trickster. Whatever that trickster thing was, it couldn't even use the tooth. But it still wanted it. The trickster was a strong little thing in its own way. 
A lot of times I fought with it so hard that we stirred up the air around us enough for Gary to notice. But it still kept my tooth from me. I just couldn't get past the trickster to get to my tooth. So you see, I wasn't even trying to haunt the livings. I just needed my tooth back. Although, it was good to see that I could still scale, scare someone. That Gary kid near jumped out of his skin a few times. <laughs> Thank you, Elmer. That was very enlightening. What do you think the trickster was? I couldn't tell you, but I will say this. I think I saw something sneaking in through the door as Serafina was leaving. <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to have to track that down. This is Fiona Fabblestable, and you've been listening to Ghost Stories, The Flip Side.